Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing video, I'm Aditya. In this video, we are going to talk about the server middleware, server APIs and server routes. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so in NUX3, we can create a server directory in which we can define our own API routes, our own API server routes and also middleware that runs on each server route. Now, NUX3 uses Node.js under the hood, so we can reuse that server to create our own API inside this. Not just that, we can use those APIs to call external APIs. Now I'll give an example. In this case, if I go to uh, config.ts over here, so currently I have removed the public object that we created in the last video. And the reason being the app secret, which we don't want to expose it to the client side. So in this case, we need some server side functionality, which will make an external API call in this case to Garchi API, so that we don't have to worry about exposing our app secret. So what we are going to do now here is to have the functionality of API routes, not just for calling external APIs, but also for our internal APIs as well. So we will be creating first a folder, again, naming matters, name server. And inside this server directory, we need to create another folder, which is API. Now, when you create API folder, any file inside this will be mapped to an API route. For instance, if I say products.js, now this will be mapped to forward slash API forward slash products.js. Base URL will be the URL where your Nux3 app is hosted. Let's say currently it's on localhost, so it's going to be localhost colon 3000 forward slash API forward slash product.js. Now we can make this like get and post like all together route over here, but we can also separate it for get route and post route. So if you want to make it for only get requests, so here we can say products dot, then the method name get and then dot JS. So products dot method name dot JS, in this case get, and then this API will only listen for get request. When it receives any post request or put request, it will throw an error. We will see that as well. Now what we are going to do here is, we need to export default a function which will take a function as a parameter. So it's going to be define event handler. Now this is going to be a function which is going to take a handler which is going to be a function as a parameter. So inside this there will be another callback. Now this callback will take event as a parameter. Now this event is going to be an object which will contain the request, response and context objects again. So let me show you. So console. And now to make an API call for this, all we have to do is go inside our fetch API over here. So we are doing it correctly. So forward slash API. And we just need to remove the base URL part because we are not making any call to Garchi API. This our server side API will make call to Garchi API. And also we don't need this over here. So you can for now copy it from here and just paste it over here and comment it because we'll need it later. And yeah, that's all. So save this. And then let's go back to our browser. Now we need to reload this most probably because we added certain new things. So let's reload this. It's gonna take a bit of time. Perfect. So now you will see this is what that event object has. So it has a request, context, then response over here, server response. And under the hood, it uses H3 library. So H3.js is a Node.js library which allows you to create serverless functionalities or create serverless APIs. Now the problem is when you create serverless APIs, you need to make sure that you stay in the limit of one MB because the maximum memory limit for the serverless function is one MB. Now, if you use Express or something like that for that, it's gonna be a heavy library. So for that reason, we can use H3, which has like approximately a size of 71 KB, which is very less. And then we can add our own functionalities in that. Perfect. Now let's go back over here and try to make a call with a post request. So here I'm gonna say method. This time I'm gonna say post request and let's see what happens. If we refresh this, you will see here. Okay, let me close that event. Uh, let's just uncomment this. 
and then if you see there are no errors because we are not printing those so what we need to do is we just need to print error which we can get it from here so i could do something like this console.log error and then if i go back over here you'll see that we are getting error values so that's going to be true because of course there's some error so let's also do error that value and then if we go back over here now refresh the page it also here you'll see it says fetch error 405 method post is not allowed so in this case we can only make get request so let's make it a get request return something from here so let's return a message which says success we go back over here refresh this page we have error as null and there we go we have this null now we can also uh, show this message so here we could say uh, outside of this console dot log data dot value in this case it's going to be product because we are aliasing it that's product products dot value and if we see it again we will see the message which is so here message success so that's great now let's try to make call to our external api now this event again is going to be request response and context so through request we can get our query parameters so here we could do a sync and then here we can make something like this const response equ response equal to await fetch and then this will be our runtime config so we can use something like this here const runtime config equal to use runtime config and then we can have access to runtime config dot base url and then api products and then we will need the query parameters so we can get the query parameters like this so we could say const params equal to then now here we have a helper function which is get query so if i show in the documentation this one over here so we can pass the event of context in that and then it will give us the parameters so params one params two so here we could say get query pass the event object and we can also console this over here so we can see what we get params params and then over here we need to pass certain headers this will be so i've just put the app secret over there and here we can just return product Actually, we don't need these quotes and then simply we can return the response dot json then we can return the data here perfect now let's see what do we get after we make this request okay so this won't be api because it's going to be now forward slash products and then over here we can have something like this and that will go to our front end so if we save this give it a reload and we should be able to see our product detail over here that's great our params and products details now that we can pass to our front end over here so this will be products dot or we can yeah we can straight away pass without any key we can straight away pass the data so it's going to be products dot data and then we will see our products here so if we refresh this Okay, so we just need, now inside data, we have data. So in this case, we need to do something like this, uh, data dot data, data, and then again, dot data. And now if we go back over here, you will see our product list. And then if we want to have new product, we can refresh the page and we can get the new products. So this is how we can create our own API. 
And it's not necessary that you have to only do it for calling external APIs again, like you can make it for Mongoose or SQLize and have your own database connect through here. Now, next thing is, what if we wanna have server routes? So for server routes, we can create another new folder over here. It's gonna be routes. Let me see if it's routes. I guess it's routes. So according to documentation, yeah, it's routes. And here we can create a server routes. Now the difference between API route and the server route is that for server route, we don't have to specify the forward slash API prefix. So we can have it the same functionality without forward slash prefix. But the problem here is we just need to make sure that it doesn't clash with any of our pages route. Okay. So here I'm going to say product dot post dot js or actually this is going to be a get request or you can make it a post request let's make it a post request so here we can have same thing export default define event handler which is going to be a function taking event and then we can here return a response. Now here, let's take some body parameters. So const body equal to, now here we could say, or we could use a helper function for parsing the body parameters. So that would be, read body. So again, it's gonna be an asynchronous function. So we could do await read body then event. And here, let's pass whatever body parameters we receive. If we save this, go back over here to products.view. Let's make with this fetch API over here, or actually let's do something like this. Now here, let's make call to method post and whatever data we get, we will get it over here. So let's do that. And now if we go over here, refresh the page, we will see that we are getting body as null, pass a body over here, something like this body. It's gonna be, let's pass this parameters of like size is gonna be three, page is gonna be page dot value. Now if we go back over here, refresh the page from here, we should see those body parameters over here. And there we go, we have those body parameters, perfect. So this is how you can also make post requests. And in this case, if you don't want an API prefix, you can just call the server routes. The other functionality with the server comes is the middleware. Now this middleware routes, they will only run on all the server routes. So of course they will run on your first, the page is loaded. Now there is different middleware for page or routes, and there is different middleware for server routes. Server routes middleware runs on all the server routes, including your server side rendered pages. I'll show you how it works. So here we'll create a new file. Let's give it a name, call it auth.js, just the middleware name. And here again, same thing. We need to export default a function. This is gonna be define uh, event handler. So if I show you the docs over here, so if we go to middleware, uh, here we just can pass like the same thing, exactly the same thing. Actually, we can just copy this and just, as it's just for example. Now, the one thing we need to notice here is if there are any errors here, we need to throw an error. But if there are no errors, which should not use next or something, we just need to like keep it like this console.log, something like this, or just keep it blank and let it flow forward if we want to make that request flow forward. Now, you'll see there is a new request, then the route, then new request, and the route again corresponding to this, then the new request and the route. So you can watch for specific routes. Let's say I want to only watch for dashboard routes in my API. If I'm having dashboard APIs, then I can have it over there and check if the user is authenticated. If the user is authenticated, then we just proceed forward, do nothing. If not, we throw error. So we'll show you an example. Let's say const user is false. Okay. Now here, what we need to do is we need to watch for all dashboard routes. Let's watch for this in this case, API route, just to all API routes. And here we will say event.request.url.index of, and we are looking for API in our route. If this route exists, 
then in that case, what we are going to do is we need to also make sure that and then not user. So if these two conditions are met, then in that case, we can throw an error. So throw new error, not authenticated. Now I'm just throwing a general error, but you can also throw with HTTP error. So you can create a separate class, extend that to error class and then throw an error with HTTP error. So let's see what happens if we visit uh, products route. So if we save this and if I go and do your products like this, not authenticated and it throws an error. So that's great. So we can also have like routes for API middlewares or API routes, sorry, middleware for API routes. Now going back to the documentation, like you can also have route, dynamic routes. If you remember in our routing, we have dynamic routes for about. In the same way, we can have dynamic routes for API, let's say forward slash allo, and then some parameter, like a URL parameter we want to take. And that we can get it from context because event object has that context object, which has params. And we can also use certain helpers that come with H3. So for cookies or for, let's say headers, we can use those helpers. So in this case, you will see like, if you want to access cookies, there's a parse cookie helper, which will give access to all the cookies. Suppose if we want to have just one file, which handles get post put all requests, in other case, nested routes, we can import this create router from H3, create a router very similar to express and then have something like router.get, router.post and just export the router and have that route for that. For instance, if it's root route, let's say hello, API hello, then it's going to be root route because our API name over here is API forward slash hello.ts over here. So it's going to be localhost colon 3000 API forward slash API forward slash hello. Then this function will run. If it's a post request, then that function will run. So we can have it in a structured way as it. So that's all in this video. In next video, we will meet up again to discuss about route middlewares and also how we can add Tailwind CSS in Nux3. So see you in the next video. Till the next time. Goodbye.